All right guys, so you want to have an amazing lawn, but right now, let's be honest, your lawn is probably ugly if you're watching this video. So I'm gonna go through the five steps to go from an ugly lawn to an amazing lawn. The general thing I want you to understand is you gotta make small steps of progress. It's not gonna happen overnight. Um, so do as many of these tips as you can and uh, just, you'll get better at it. Um, the first one is gonna be about mowing technique. Uh, the most important thing will be that your blades are actually sharp. Now I've got videos on how to sharpen it. It's pretty easy. I used to bring them somewhere to get service because I was too afraid to do it myself. Uh, but then when I saw how easy it was, I do it now. Um, it's pretty cheap also to do it yourself. So uh, look in the video description for that. The second thing is mowing height. Now. Um, a lot of people will like to mow short because they think they're going to have to mow less often. Uh, but there's something called the one-thirds rule. Basically, you want to cut off one-third of the lawn at a time. Um, that's based on height, not area of your lawn. And if it's short, you're going to have to do it more often because it's going to need it more often. Um, the best advice I can give you is for a cool season lawn is to mow as high as you can with your lawn mower as long as your grass is not flopping over. Um, a little bit of flopping over is okay, but um, if your lawn is, is really thin, um, you don't want it to be laying over. That's not good. So go up every week, just go up another notch until it starts to look like the grass can't stand up. Also, you wanna be mulch mowing. A lot of people like to bag because they think that the uh, clippings will turn into thatch. That's actually not the case. Thatch is, uh, is something else. Don't worry about thatch. Most likely you won't have a thatch problem. Um, what you actually wanna do is mulch mow so that the grass clippings can go back and return nutrients to the soil, which uh, they say it's, if you mulch mow every year, that's like an extra uh, application of fertilizer and nitrogen, and it also brings moisture, and it's, it's just a lot of good stuff. So mulch mow bag only if there's a very specific reason to like if you're scalping or if it rained crazy and your mower just can't mulch mow because it's way too thick um, so do your best but mulch mow as much as possible now the next thing will be watering uh, this I did wrong for a while um, I was under the assumption that if you water for an hour then that's enough water um, but if you have cheaper sprinklers it might take six hours. And uh, the way you find out is you take cups or tuna cans, put them around, turn your sprinklers on, I do it for an hour, and then measure how much water is in there. Now, if it's not an inch, keep watering. Keep watering, and you know, you might be surprised. I had an old sprinkler that took six hours. And it's not the water pressure, it was the sprinkler itself. Uh, we have amazing water pressure here, so. Uh, you want to be watering one time a week the full inch so once you figure out how much you should be watering you should be watering that much once a week um, now obviously if you look at weather reports and you already got an inch you can wait seven more days and then water another inch um, but if you aren't able to do that or you can only water you know once a week just put it for the full inch you'll be good to go that will help tremendously now you might notice that sometimes um, you could water the whole lawn, like I, I watered the whole lawn and there are certain areas that were always brown anyways. That's where dish soap can come in. Um, now I actually used a professional grade surfactant because um, I wanted to try it and see the difference and that works much faster. I think it was 60 bucks for a bag. It was within a week that brown spot turned green because it was already getting an inch a week of water but you can go this route. I've used this in other areas. Um, I've done it at friends' houses, I've showed them, and it works pretty quick too. Um, might not be instant results within a week, but you know, a couple weeks, keep doing it, it'll, it'll get there. Um, I also like to make my own, it's a lot cheaper. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. Um, the benefit to that is there's some natural uh, surfactants that you can use, a uh, yucca extract and all that stuff that's good for the soil as well. So once you're mowing properly, nice and tall mulch mowing, and you got your watering down one inch a week, the next step 
just proper feeding. Now, for the most part, you probably know what this is, Milorganite. For the most part, I just use this. Now, if you're, if you don't like doing liquid sprays and mixing stuff, step one isn't terrible. Um, it's better to um, separate the uh, pre-emergence, which I'll get into later, but the step one, I, I feel like is an okay sometimes use, but for the most part, Milorganite is gonna actually feed the soil and uh, it's, it's a natural way of feeding the grass because the microorganisms break down the natural materials in here and then they feed the grass and the soil. Um, and what's nice is you can't really over apply this. Um, some people will put twice the bag rate down weekly. Doesn't burn the lawn. Um, it works great. Um, but I would recommend, I like doing the, uh, for most people, I like recommending the four times a year method. And that's basically before all the major holidays, you know, 4th of July, Memorial Day, Thanksgiving, uh, I think Labor Day. A week before those uh, holidays, dump it down at the bag rate. Then when it comes around to that holiday and you got people over, it looks great. Pretty simple to do, um, but most people aren't fertilizing enough. Um, if you're doing it four times with Milorganite, that's great, That's you, you got it all down. Um, if you do the four step process, that works too. Um, you're not gonna have as nice of a result because that's not feeding the soil and that, that benefit does other stuff than just grow the grass. When you feed the soil, it makes the soil loosen up, um, it holds water better, it, um, it just gets so many better things. If you think about like in nature, the soil is always nice and fertile. Well, you want fertile soil for your lawn. So using a natural, uh, it's not certified organic, USDA organic, but it's an organic fertilizer. So, and it's widely available, which is why most people prefer to recommend this because you can find other options out there. But, um, you know, if I tell you guys, hey, go get this. Well, if you don't live where I live, chances are you're not gonna find it. But these guys, they got it everywhere. So here's where we get into where most people fail. Uh, most people um, think, okay, I'll mow it, I'll cut it, you know, I'll water it and everything will be good. And then they wonder why they're infested with weeds and then they get frustrated and then it kills it. Um, so there's a two-step process to fixing all the weeds in your lawn. You need to kill them and prevent The best way to do this is in the springtime when the forsythia blooms, get, get your step one product put it down, you're gonna prevent most of the weeds. Some will still get through, that's fine, but this is gonna way reduce the weed pressure. Now, you might be wondering, oh, well, I, I just put down a Milorganite, can I put this down? Yes, you can do both at the same time if you really wanted to. You'll have to mow more often, but it's not gonna burn the lawn. So the step one has a pre-emergent in it. That's gonna prevent new weeds. It's not gonna prevent every weed type, but the majority of it that everybody has troubles with will be prevented. Um, then it gets on to killing weeds. All right, so I like doing things the simple way. You're not gonna kill all the weeds at the same time. Some people like to mix a little bit of this and that and this and, and make a concoction that can kill every type of weed. Well, that's great, but I like seeing progress and I also like um, not stressing the lawn too much. So if you've got a ton of weeds, the best thing you can do is start out with this. It's uh, Weed Be Gone Max plus Crabgrass Control. Now if you look at the active ingredients, there's a whole bunch of different companies that make generics or different versions, but basically the one that says it kills crabgrass um, it's gonna kill most of the weeds in your lawn. You'll look at it, I don't know if it says a list, uh, 200 weeds this will kill. So you get one bottle of this, 5,000 square feet, hook it on your hose, spray it around, go to town. You don't need to like drown everything, you just spray it so you see that it got wet. And it's gonna kill the majority of the weeds. 
and you're gonna go, wow, this is great. So you got this killing everything that's already there. You got the other stuff preventing new stuff. Right there, you're already gonna be, you know, way better off than before. Um, then the next step would be to start to get into a little bit more difficult weeds. Um, the biggest one being, all right, buddy. The biggest one being clover. Now I've got this version. They do make it in a ready to spray bottle. So it's the same exact thing. Um, hook it up to your hose, spray it around. It will kill clover, uh, ground ivy, chickweed, oxalis, and uh, violet, a couple other tough ones. This will kill most of the tough uh, weeds. It's really simple, but don't spray it all at once. Use this, spray it around, wait a week or two, look around, see if you need to spray again, if there's any more crabgrass or whatever dandelions you gotta kill. If there aren't, then you move on to this. Um, and then a few weeks later, if you got a lot of nut sedge, you can get one of these of the nut sedge killer. I'd like to take this and just spot spray it. So this does, I think, 5,000 square feet again. Most of it's in here because I just spot spray with it. But since it hooks up to your hose and you can just go around real quick, you don't have to mix anything. It's a lot more convenient. Okay, thank you. There's a lot of other weed killers that are more specific for the even harder to kill ones, but generally those weeds, most people don't notice and are like, oh, I, that's fine. That's part of the lawn. They didn't even know it was there. Uh, someone like me, I like, I want the perfect lawn, so I start to notice everything that doesn't match up and I try to kill it. Um, but watch the rest of my videos, stay subscribed, I get into those things. But this video is more for the standard, hey, I just have an ugly lawn and I want to have a nice lawn and I don't want to go crazy spending money. Because each of these things, I think they're like 10 or 20 bucks, they'll do, they'll do the average lawn and you're, you're good to go. Alright, so now we got the weeds done. Next step comes down to repairing grass seed. Now, the thing that most people do wrong when they're repairing their lawns, and I see this on forum posts all the time, I talk with friends all the time, um, everybody in the spring wants to get going with lawn care and they plant their grass seed and then they wonder why it never grew. Um, well, that's because you put weed preventer down and that will also prevent the good grass seed. And it's also because spring is not the best time to be growing grass seed. You can do it. I've got a video if you want to see how I did it and it's it worked fine, but you have to pay a lot more attention. So if you're watching this video searching how to fix an ugly lawn, chances are uh, you're not there yet. So just wait till the fall. After you've killed all the weeds, you're going to have holes anyway. So why seed twice? Why, you know, you're, you're going to be killing the new grass seed while you're trying to spray all these chemicals on the weeds. So you might as well Get rid of the weeds, focus on watering and mowing and killing weeds, and then in the fall, you can start filling in and repairing the spots. And now it can be as simple as just throwing the seed down, throwing some peat moss on top. Um, you can go around with a thatching rake and really uh, dig it up if you want to. You could aerate an overseed, that works as well. Um, all those methods work, but in the fall, the reason most of the time people fail is because they're doing it in the spring and if you, you know, aerate and overseed in the spring, sure it might help a little bit but you're not going to see the results you're expecting and so that's why everybody always says fall, fall, fall. Um, but you don't want to do it late in the fall because then you got winter coming and you know my lawn I seeded it a little bit late and it came in, it's growing but if I had been able to seed it sooner right now the grass would be amazing. Um, so once the temperatures start to go down, that's when you can start to grow your grass seed and, and do that. And I'll put some more links to how to do all that stuff. I guess that was my sign to uh, wrap it up. Um, so if you want to see the steps on how to do more in-depth detail all those different steps Click on the links in the description uh, This this is my awesome lawn. It's looking pretty good. I'm not it's not perfect yet But I'm working on it and uh, if you love watching videos like this, please subscribe I'm gonna show you all the crazy stuff that I try on my lawn just to see how much extra oomph I can get out of it because I, I like to go for I, I consider it a performance lawn. I don't know if 
that's the right word for it, but I want to see how much I can get out of the lawn uh, just as just as something fun to do. So there you go. Thanks for watching.